Howdy folks, it is a new Mega Drive game day and we've got a new one from Broke Studio and that is The Curse Legacy. Now this is a follow up to a game I reviewed a while back called The Curse Knight. It's sort of a follow up, um, there's similarities, I don't know if it's an actual official sequel or follow up but you'll, you'll kind of see anyway. Uh, the Cursed Knight was a run and gun. This is a run and gun, but it also incorporates a little mix of different genres and it's a bit weird. So you're gonna see um, in the review anyway. And there's a Kickstarter just gone up today. Um, I think literally in the last hour or so. It's Monday today. I don't know when this video is gonna go up, but I thought I'll give you a full review of the game so you can decide, do you want to part with your hard earned cash on the Kickstarter? So you've got a month to back this. Um, obviously, Broke Studio kindly sent over this press copy, but I'm under no obligation to review it favorably, so it will be my honest opinions. Anyway, really nice box. It's kind of a weird style box, a different, um, they go with a different style to a lot of the other indie developers. Um, very similar to the Cursed Knight artwork that they, they had previously, but I'll show you uh, some close-ups of the box anyway, and you'll see it with the Cursed Knight. It comes with a manual inside, fairly basic color manual, nice, and a cartridge. Yeah, everything looks really, really nice and, and professional. So yeah, let's have a look at the game, The Cursed Legacy. What's interesting about The Cursed Legacy is it's essentially two games in one. At the main menu you have four options, story, run and gun, exploration and mini games. Story is the full game so it incorporates the other three together. You'll get the main run and gun action for the bulk of the gameplay, but mixed in you'll get the exploration bits which is an entirely different style of game. In exploration you control this little mech exploring maze like underground rooms, but more on that shortly. The mini games are small games that you'll find along the way in the exploration game and completing them allows you to access doors and obtain maps. These games are quite basic, some of which will be very familiar. There's one like Snake, Minesweeper, a 3D maze like Wolfenstein 3D and one reminiscent of the Sonic special stages. They're a small distraction and shouldn't give you much trouble. The games are presented as arcade cabinets, so while you're playing them you'll see the protagonist's hands controlling the joystick. I wouldn't call these minigames a full game, which is why I describe The Cursed Legacy as two games. The full game is really the two main games, the run and gun action and the more chill exploration game. You can treat these as two completely separate games if you like, and I recommend you do after trying the full game. I found that each had such a wildly different pace that each game suited a different mood. The run and gun is really challenging and rewards perseverance, whereas the exploration game is more relaxed and won't punish you for taking your time. What's nice is the cart supports three save slots, so you can have a save for the full story mode, one for the run and gun, and one for the exploration. That way you can dip in and out of each as you please. Anyway, on to the main story mode. The manual and intro make the plot seem very confusing indeed. Something about you being the last human and needing to change history by killing your own father. Grandfather paradox be damned. Sounds like a cursed legacy indeed. Whatever the plot, I get the impression that the player character isn't necessarily a good guy. The core gameplay here is much like its predecessor, The Cursed Knight. It's pure run and gun action. Just run and shoot all enemies in your path while avoiding any incoming projectiles. Several power-ups are available which change your shot type. There's a flamethrower, spread shot and homing shot. Once you collect one of these weapon upgrades, you'll have a limited number of shots shown at the top there to the right of your health. So don't spam shoot, but at all other times you can press shoot to your heart's content. You can hold down fire, but you'll get a faster rate of fire by pressing it repeatedly. Other upgrades are a shield and a health restore, which tops you up to your maximum HP of 60. Any hit removes 10 HP, so essentially you have 6 hit points. At the main menu, you can select between a 3 button and 6 button controller layout, but they're largely the same. A is shoot, B jump, and C shoots with a locked position. Press down on the D-pad to crouch, and down and B to roll, and you can double jump too, which rolls him into a ball in the air. Handy for avoiding attacks, especially from bosses. As well as the forward roll executed by pressing down and B, you can also use it to crouch next to walls to shoot these turrets from cover. Overall, it looks pretty good. Some things have been reused from the Cursed Knight, for example, some sound effects and some of the art assets. 
The main character is a lot larger on screen this time, which is a welcome change. Some of the music can get repetitive at times, and actually this is something the mini games are really guilty of, but overall the sound is excellent. Now this kind of run and gun game is what they call the die and retry genre, and they aren't kidding. I'm not particularly skilled at these games, so I die a lot when I'm trying to beat the levels. Thankfully there are these little checkpoint poles, like a demonic version of Sonic's checkpoints, which will help you keep on going. When you die, you just return to the last one you reached. When playing just the run and gun mode, it'll feel like you're fighting a lot of bosses, because you don't have the exploration bits in the mini games to break it up. Some of the bosses are really cool. Look at this one made of green dots, it looks awesome. And there are some other clever bits of 3D visual trickery, like when you collect the mech and get this rotating 3D animation. In between the bosses you also get some fiendishly tricky bits of platforming. This bit was particularly hard as you're being chased by a mechanical wasp which will one-shot you if you get impaled on its stinger, all while performing some rapid fire platforming jumps and manoeuvres. Once you collect the mech in story mode you get the little exploration bits. This is the exploration mode of the game which as I said before just feels better played separately to me. It gives me Amiga vibes and I quite like the slower pace as it just lets you explore and collect. Guide your mech through this network of underground rooms, collecting items and making your way to set areas targeted on your map. This aspect of the game incorporates metroidvania mechanics, as you'll need to collect abilities to upgrade your mech, which allow you to access previously impassable areas. These include a grappling hook, which allows you to swing on these, the ability to hover slightly in mid-air, and a wall jump. The controls are similar to the other mode, A to shoot and B to jump, C performs a dash, down and B lowers your mech so you can crawl under low platforms. Left or right and B on a wall does a wall jump, and X uses your grappling hook. Controls are slightly different for a three button pad. The mini games are a subset of this exploration part, and as I said earlier are used to unlock doors, and also to unlock the maps. The map shows your current destination, the location of save points and collectibles. You can find pickups to restore your health, upgrade your max health, and also increase your hover capacity. There are several secrets to discover too. This gameplay mode also has bosses, although not as flashy in design as the run and gun segments. The music in this mode is far more subtle and eerie. Again, the music gives me Amiga vibes, and seems to work well with the visuals and gameplay style. It's different, but again very good music, so the game has a decent soundtrack overall. At first I thought this exploration mode seemed really boring, but actually as I started progressing and some of the metroidvania mechanics came into play with the abilities, I found myself really enjoying this mode. It's such a welcome change of pace from the run and gun game too. At present I've only got to the end boss on stage 4 of the run and gun part. There are 5 stages in total, followed by a final boss. I find that some bosses are seemingly impossible at first, but after I learn their tricks they end up being beatable. I'm just taking the exploration part of the game slowly, enjoying its chilled pace. Normally I wouldn't review a game until completing it, but in this case I'm pushing ahead in the interest of promoting the Kickstarter, and I think I've seen enough of the game to form a fair opinion. In all honesty, I find the whole blend of genres in story mode a bit weird, so they've absolutely made the right choice in letting you play them separately. Of course, Kickstarter projects are always a risk, but Broke Studio have repeatedly delivered in the past without issue, so I'm confident that the cursed legacy will be no different. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.